Hey YouTube, Red Viking Trucker. It is, uh, what is today? Today is Friday, Friday morning. I'm uh, waiting to get my windshield replaced here at our yard in the Carolinas. Um, had three rocks hit the windshield and pretty much one just right across the bottom edge. They almost hit all within about three inches of each other height-wise, but spread out pretty evenly across the windshield and one of them almost right in the center was the biggest crack and then it just slowly escalated as I was driving back from El Paso and uh, this little two inch cracks all became 24 inch cracks 36 inch cracks so I'm here getting that fixed before I make any more runs I want to do a couple quick videos this video I'm going to discuss three things I'm going to discuss uh, some hiring parameters in the Florida region and then I'm going to discuss how I take care of dispatch which is a good tip for you whether you land with any company or our company and then uninvited visitors mm, that's a that's a that's a new one on me because it's happened twice now in the last two weeks but let me start first with Florida hiring uh, a couple of you reached out to me quite a few actually almost 120 people have reached out to me about my company and uh, we don't have any terminals in Florida but what I've learned in this process is that the Florida Panhandle, when you get south of Lake Okeechobee, what I've been told by people who live in those southern Panhandle areas, that a lot of companies aren't hiring like down in Miami and those areas. Here's what I would do for you folks that are in the, in the southern Florida region that are looking for a truck driving job. I would go to the truckersreport.com and I'll put that email address, or pardon me, the, the web URL right here. Go to the truckersreport.com, go to their jobs page. On their jobs page, you can put in your zip code and then select your experience, whether you need training, whether you're a, need a, you're a student, or whether you're zero to six months, whether you're six to 12 months, and then it goes from there up to you know three years, five years, 10 years experience. But you put that in and hit enter, and the filter will give you the, the companies that hire in those areas. Um, I've heard of a couple that do hire further south, even including Miami, but you just need to do your research. And it's a little bit, a few more phone calls, a little bit more uh, on your side to do. So that's what I know about the Florida hiring area. Uh, we have a, we have a terminal, two terminals in Georgia. We have a ter two terminals in South Carolina. We have a terminal in North Carolina. We have a terminal in Louisiana, a terminal in Laredo, Texas, and. Uh, so we're a little bit more limited, unless you're willing to drive to the terminals, we're a little bit more limited to uh, where you can operate out of. Because you will hire from any state, but you gotta be willing to operate out of one of those terminals. Because when you're, when you're on your 34 hour break, you have to leave your truck, if you're like in your home area, you have to leave your truck at the yard and then drive home for your break, unless you're resetting over the road but uh, they don't let you take your truck home with my company. Other companies do, our company doesn't. So you can come on board from any state as long as you're willing to work out of a specific terminal. It just limits you unless you're gonna either relocate or spend six months or nine months or 12 months living out of your truck and just to get your experience. I know quite a few people I've talked to have gone through a divorce, they, they wanna leave their job and living out of the truck is an option. So if you live anywhere in those areas, when you call me, we can, you know, we, our company can still talk to you. Um, but that's what I know about the Florida region, but that's a good resource, the Truckers Report. It also has all the uh, practice CDL tests there, and that the practice tests are all updated for 2016, and those practice tests on the, um, on the Truckers Report, if you can pass those test questions, they're the exact same questions at DMV. So that's where I, it's one of the, one of the three uh, resources I use to study from a CDL. Um, let me tell you how I take care of dispatch and I began doing this about three months ago and about once a month I, I do this it just depends on on the day or the week but you know at the end of the day we're all they're hustling trying to do their job I'm hustling trying to do my job fleet managers trying to do their job people in the office trying to do their job but I deal with I deal mostly with dispatch so once a month I'll pick a day and I send pizzas to the dispatch like I just did this last Saturday 
because I haven't sent, I've never sent any pizzas on a weekend. There's normally a different crew, a little bit smaller crew, and uh, you know they're in there working on the weekend. So I, I, I'll send an order of pizzas, and I'll use a, use one of my credit cards, and they can just sign for it. But I try to let them know that I understand we're all hustling. You know, things happen, mistakes are made here and there, including on my part sometimes. At the end of the day, we're all we're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to hustle and make a living. So you'd be surprised how many people, once I do that through Qualcomm, respond from dispatch. You go, hey, man, thanks a lot. Hey, man, thanks a lot. You know, those small things, those small touches. Because you can never be too polite. You can never be too friendly. You can never uh, be too respectful. Those things never go out of style. And uh, people remember you for that. So just, just a tip about dealing with your dispatch once you get out here. Uninvited visitors, man. I have had two incidents where people came up on my truck. Uh, three, but I'm not counting the third one. I'm, I'm leaving that one out and I'll have a different video about that. But I've had two instances where people came up to my truck. One when the curtains were closed and knocked on the truck and I looked out and the second time I had just pulled in last week, I was coming across northern Mississippi, uh, heading down towards the, the southern uh, Texas area. And when I pulled up to the truck stop, I'd been there about 10 minutes. And it startled me because a dude came out of nowhere. I had a truck to my right and a truck to my left, and I've already been already back into my slot. I was doing my 30-minute 30, 30 break. And all of a sudden, there's this human being that looked homeless at the side of my truck banging on it and I looked down really quickly and saw the condition of the guy and I acted like I was taking a phone call for two reasons number one he had a backpack with him so I have no idea what was in his backpack um, and again I'm a pretty big guy but you, you knock on my truck and I didn't even see you walk up on me so obviously he came up from behind and uh, whatever he wanted which I'm sure was money because I saw him after he left my truck after I ignored him he walked around the, the lot as I was doing some other things. I saw him knocking on other people's truck trying to get money. I would never in my right mind hand anybody cash from my vehicle. I wouldn't want them to know I had cash, number one. And number two, I wouldn't want them to know what truck I'm in if I did give them some money. Like I was walking inside, and I've had this happen quite a bit, especially in the warmer months so far. Walking inside one of the travel centers, you have some people outside sitting sometimes that are asking if they can get a dollar from you, two bucks. I might throw them a dollar or two, depends on the situation, depends on what my sense is. But this guy to come up on me like that, out of the blue, knock on my truck and startle me, I just ignored him and act like I was taking a phone call and I put my headset on. And he knocked again and I just didn't look at him. He finally walked away. But be cautious out here because think about that. If you let somebody know that you have cash and you're in your truck when you do that and you're parked and then you go to the back and get in the sleeper berth, who knows? And then he had a backpack too, who knows? And we don't carry weapons. We're not allowed to. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I keep my doors locked when I park my truck. I keep my doors locked no matter where I am. And uh, be very cautious. Matter of fact, let me, let me say this. I've just thought about this. I was in uh, El Paso, Texas three months ago. And a lot of the Texas turnarounds as you're coming down and you want to get back on the interstate going the other direction, you're going to come, you're going to circle under the overpass, and that circle, that, that, that traffic circle that you're in is a very, very tight space. And when you, when you get to the other side to turn and go up to that ramp, you normally have a stop sign because you have traffic coming across in front of you, but you're angled and you have this traffic and you're underneath this bridge, okay? And my first time I was in El Paso, I was sitting like that and it was dark, it was about 9.30 at night. And I was turning around to get back on the interstate and go the other direction. And two homeless dudes walked out from behind the pillar holding up the bridge. And they were literally three feet from me, both of them, looking really, really super rough, but also, you know, had a lot of a lot of space to have weapons. And uh, they started, you know, waving at me, yelling at me and stuff. And it, it startled me because I, I was looking for traffic and I started hearing somebody right here. And I didn't see him when I first stopped my my, my truck. And uh, you just have to be cautious, man. My, my doors are always locked, even when I'm in traffic. And in that situation, now that I know how that those those turnarounds work and how tight you are and how close under the bridge you are, I really make sure when I'm in those situations that I, I'm paying attention. 
because uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't have taken them much with me being distracted, looking away, to break through the glass and, and, and you know knock me out or do whatever they wanted to try and do with it. And it was startling. It was startling how fast they were at my door. So be conscious when you get out here. But uninvited visitors to your unit, man, when people knock on your truck and the, the, the drapes are closed, it, it's, it's a crapshoot opening those, opening those drapes and checking. And uh, a crapshoot. And, and be careful of the women out here at the truck stops. I've seen four now, three looking for rides. Uh, and then one, she was in a truck, but she looked like she was cracked out of her mind. And I saw her pull up and I saw her during my, my 10 hour DOT, I saw her talking and engaging other drivers, but she looked like she was a hooker, even though she was a truck driver and she looked stoned out of her mind. And then I was getting out of my truck, walking inside later that night to go uh, get some something to drink. And she popped out of her truck and came towards me yelling for me. I just waved at her and kept on going. Cause I'm like, you know, she was, you could smell trouble a thousand feet away from that girl. Just be careful out here. Cause you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't, and, and you don't know what mindset people are in. At the end of the day, my, my safety and my comfortability and my security is first and foremost. And uh, just, just be careful. So those are the three things I want to talk about in this video real quick. I do a lot of night driving when I do these Texas runs. A lot of night driving. I'm just rocking and rolling. Uh, I'll do 600 miles and, and have most of those miles made before the uh, rush hour in the morning. Love driving at night. You just make so much time. So those are my those are my three things for today. The uh, Or for this video, for the Florida uh, and the job search tool that I used. Taking care of your dispatch and uninvited visitors make sure you protect yourself keep yourself comfortable out here and safe none of us get out of here alive i don't know what you're waiting on red viking trucker it's out